I'll be the reason it rhyme to keep peace. He's meaning to be mean because he can't see we be keeping it cool to breathe. I'm with the school and the sea, the world as it is, doing his thing. So what's up with the ugly beat? Are we under order? I see too many dying, we're making time harder to ride. Far as I'm concerned, we're blind. Who's gonna run this when we're tired? Me. I'm off with another hotness, the soul is in this from toddler because I'm a rock kid. I crack things that we all at peace, eating its blessings, the shit is getting us extinct. Maybe I'm in the wrong time, sure, so it's alive and bright, the potential's beautiful, I trip off you all and plan things. Grabbing at mad things to stay here and see it better. Free and ready when it smells like scenes I can see inside of me because you, I'm not a fool, you look hot, you so cook. You're not locked, you book, let's see you running. To something you're glad you bring in for. Who's in the way of providing everything alive? It's the surprises, who's hiding it out the way? The slave's day is coming. Leave the ground alone, it's open arms up holding. You're holding back. We can't even snack, but it's rich enough. You lying on the sky, bruv, that it don't include us. Rain makes pools for everybody, so where's the food? Thinking back, it scares me today to think of the dangerous combination of mental scarring and consumer so-called remedies that I had to struggle my way out of. What an unforgiving snare. There I was, in between abuse, calculating what I must amount to, to these crazed people. And why are they crazy to me? They all seem to take breaks from their insanity with what was advised on the TV. as the remedy for the lack of play robbed from them in schools built to prepare them to be workers for a national structure that tears them apart from inside out, with the only reward being junk food, booze, clubs, and brief holidays consuming the same. Was this why my young life was so cruel? Was it the poisonous consumerism with its flame retardant clothes leaking its toxins through their skin and food dumping its preservatives into bloodstreams that eventually reached the brain with its acids and turned them crazy? Loss of childhood. Had them lining up for a prepared remedy. That is a total lie. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Fire the bloom? Yeah, man. And the leaves as well. And if you dig around it, you get the roots. You dry them, and in the winter, you use it as tea to keep the magnesium up. And the bigger the bloom, the sweeter it is. Can you do it again? For the camera? Yeah. Magnesia. Chicken. Chicken and, and fries. Also. Fries? Yeah. Not uh, the vegetables? No, I forget. The menu is uh, cheaper. No, it's okay. I'll just take uh, the chicken just, and, yeah, and the fries. Chicken yeah. and fries. Yeah. Sauce? Uh, ketchup. Ketchup? Yeah. Yes. Okay, take seeds. Do you want some drink? 
So, here you are. Cheers, man. So, enjoy your meal. Thank you. Someone's junk in the way, man. I literally can't move my legs past the gut, you know? Strange. So you can imagine what's happening to somebody that lives like this every day, you know? It's quite, it's alarming. You know? I'm lucky because I've got the know-how and whatever to stop this and leave it and be healthy. Right now, I'm in the mode of disabilities. It's a whole different energy, mentally. It's been alarming how I've been living. All the sim like the symptoms in my body, in my joints, um, fearful. Mm. Afraid emotions, you know what I mean? Cranky. Horrible movement. At this point, I feel kind of swollen and um, my range of movement is, has been compromised a lot. You know, high intensity training was my playground, you know what I mean? Um, I didn't really get exhausted. I was constantly active. When you're not healthy, you complain about it and want it to fix itself. What are we doing? during this process is going back to the patterns and sequences of eating and movement and breathing that is lymphatic friendly. Well, before this experiment, I was highly productive, fluid in movement, optimistic. Then I got on this. Optimum went, op optimism went. Memory is, my memory is, seems to be shot. You know what I mean? And I just want to get back to where I was. Got it? Yeah. So the next time I take these off and I go, <coughs> they'll be like this. Well, now I've got one app after a month of eating what you guys eat, or a lot of you guys eat. And I used to have a really nice V taper, but now if you look at, the, at my back, it's just straight. And I've got this kind of, um, I don't know what you call this stuff around here. Look at that stuff. <laughs> I look like I'm wearing a bodysuit and then there's like my fat face my triceps have gone 
Look at that. So from this block, a work of art. <laughs> I've got two, how many mouths to feed, man? <laughs> what did you say? Uh, what did it take to get this far? It takes eating the average working poor diet. You know what I mean? Trusting somebody else, what, what somebody else has prepared for you. Believing that the smiley face on the, on the, on the package is, this, these are your friends. <laughs> so you shovel it in your mouth, and you shovel it in, and you shovel it in, and you shovel it in, and you eat late, and you don't worry, you don't care about what order you eat it in. And this is the wonderful result. I think the equivalent of what I see in the mirror right now is a trash can. Top to bottom. Because I'm conscious, I'm doing this for a reason, it hasn't made me as depressed as if I was actually not doing this and I was caught up in, in this and I had to function. Then I'd be super depressed. But I know there's going to be an end to this, so I'm a little bit more optimistic than the average person. The average person is on this and thinks, I'm eating the diet they tell me to eat and I'm dying. He's still addicted to sweets. Me? Yeah. Sweets? Yeah. When I first met you, you was a savage on the sweets, man. I was. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's just in the uh, moment. Hey, what's with him, Berger? Ah, boom. Um, no, it's just in uh, like, like once in there, whatever, for three or four months, I got my sweets in. Yeah. And that's it. Normally, only uh, good stuff. Ice cream now. Lately, it's a lot of ice cream. Like wa water ice, popsicles. Yeah. <laughs> you don't good, give it though. a shit. Yeah, it tastes really good. <laughs> I really love the ice, ice popsicle stuff. But sweet, what are the, out of the out of the tap? You mean? Out of, yeah, all of them the beer companies and all these people, they use the worst water they can find, man. Like the same from the toilet. Oh, that's good, that's okay. I like maybe some toilet ice cream. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> toilet ice cream. You but I with toilet ice cream. <laughs> yeah, but it was a bad one with me. Alright. Yo, you're a funeral, buddy. I don't want to fight you, I want you to show me shit. No, I don't show shit. <laughs> you will fight me. <laughs> yeah. This is how you lose weight. You're not getting around uh, uh you just you don't lose weight in your YouTube. Come on. Hey, give me a Hey God, give me five. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, five. <laughs> Trying to weaken me, man. I'm a bit sick. <laughs> Just at the process now of the weight has gone down so fast that all I've got left is almost like loose skin and cellulite. So when I get into the final phase, that should all tighten up, you know. But at the moment. I'm fasting more than 19 hours a day, and it's a dry fast. No drink, no food, 
just eating from the food that I put in the day before. I have a small meal after 10 o'clock, then I start fasting again. So now the energy levels are pretty low, but when I push myself through this process, then I'm going to cause my body to renew itself and fix, uh, speed up the kind of breakdown system, the starvation system in the body, which causes the cells to rejuvenate. So this is what I want. Okay, so this is where we're at right now from the last time you saw me. I've gone down, down so fast that the fat has to catch up and tighten up. So I'm left with all this loose stuff. You know what I mean? I feel far, a little bit faster, as I said, weaker, a little bit sluggish. Then uh, maybe uh, three weeks time, I will start introducing more food. Now I've cut, cut down and re-educated my body to, to burn fat rather than storing it. So then I'll start introducing certain foods and herbs again, which will intensify my training. And all of that stuff will shrink down and I'll be back to normal me. But it's, uh, it really gave me an appreciation of how hard it is for people once they get out of shape, how to get back in shape. Because there were times when I was doing this, I thought maybe I've done so much damage, I'll never get back to my former self. So. But it's good news so far. Tell us a bit about the first time we started training. Man, uh, the first time we started training, as you guys saw, my heart was in shock for carrying around all this extra weight. It was like I had another person on my back. So everything was difficult. Breathing was difficult. Thinking was difficult. Getting my heart rate back to normal was difficult. Most of all, the sick feeling of not having any oxygen in the body. I mean, was a, I'm glad I'm past that a little bit. Still there, but... I've, I've had times when I'm in the gym where I'm just flowing, and you know, and as I start introducing food again in about two weeks' time, you will see there'll be a lot more flow and more enjoyment in the movement, and I'll get that body to allow me to move like that. Choosing spontaneously to move is, you know, listening to your, like your own nature's needs. It was like physical graffiti in every single situation I was in. It doesn't matter if it was an airport or I'm on a train or whatever, I'm gonna move or I'm gonna stretch and engage with my gifts. The more play you have in your life and you gift your body with movement, is in return, it presents itself beautifully. So it starts to shed all of the things that are in the way of you seeing it in its true glory. So this is like completely based upon that Michelangelo sentence of, I find the sculpted thing within the rock because it was always there, you know? So when I'm constantly moving, I'm sculpting. Like this movement thing that is, is happening in your body, you have so much movement inside of you. 
And then if it's not allowed to be expressed in one way, it will just be expressed in another way, but you can't stop it. Show must go on there. Movement sits in the heart of it, the connection into this. And I, I only feel whole when I'm in motion, when the, the coin spins, and I can see both sides at the same time. And the rest of it, this, this cerebral existence, this living from the head up, is, uh, somehow feels limited. I actually believe there is a lot more life in what you are talking about. Vocalization, breath, intention, emotion. It's all married together in one moment. And it's not, it's not segregated, it's not, it's not dissolved, it's not separated. So there is a lot of good in it. There is just different outlets. Now you're dancing, you're fighting, you're living, you're breathing. They're all really a product of the same thing. You know, there's a lot of emphasis on the fact that we're going to die. For sure, that's the one sure thing. Mm. We're going to decompose, swell up and go to dust. Mm. And the microbes are going to have the feast. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I was thinking, I was churning that over in my head. And I think society right now think that they're dying, but what they're doing, there's a difference. There's an art of dying. And there's, there seems to be a, an art of killing. Mm. Right? Loving, smiling, moving, exploring, emotions. That's the art of dying. Being told what to eat, sit still, alcoholism, drug addiction. That's the art of killing. Mm. You're killing yourself. You're not dying, you're killing yourself. I'm into the art of dying. Moving until I want to die moving. I want to be in the middle of going, let me try this combination. Thinking about life and then mm -hmm. thinking about life and then dying, rather than sitting there and waiting for death. It's true, that's a really pathetic end. But to say tomorrow I'm going to do this, or in the next minute I'm going to do this, and then dying. That brain was, that's a, something alive that's been switched off. Mm -hmm. That's how I want to go out, that's the ultimate point. There's a virus coming this way making everything cool, so and we, the rebels and the angry guys, are going this way making everything serotonin and dopamine. Mm -hmm. And that's how I want to die. I feel you. And that stress, as a human being, in stress, we have to get rid of it. And the way we get rid of it is through movement. That's why you get stressed, you get fight or flee, you move, we run, we, you know. But, and especially in the environment today where everybody's kind of really confined into sitting, sitting down in places and working, you know, their freedom and their life away. I mean, just sitting all the time and that stress is not being released. And then it comes out in different ways of people trying to release it. Because they don't understand, they don't have the, they're not tuning into the intelligence and the wisdom of the body. That's suggesting things, but you're caught in this kind of hamster wheel and you say, you know, this healthy desire to move and release stress is not productive when I'm in the workplace and trying to keep my job to pay bills. So I have to sit still and comply. And this stress just builds up. So...
My brother Charles was, was a person that met me when I was moving, but I had a lot of stress in my life because I was homeless and he gave me somewhere to live and it actually fed me, which allowed me to pursue even more um, my interest in movement. So we're going to go and see him today. Yeah, it's about 32 years, John. Yeah. Not many people get an opportunity to still sit here intact. Because we, guess what? We've kept moving, bro. Yeah. I want to thank you for that, brother. That's a pleasure, always. Always. Thank you for that. Always. And guess what? We're going to be having this company again for another 30 million. years. Yeah. <laughs> and why not? Yeah, yeah. And why not? By the grace of God, God willing. Sure, we're still intact. Yeah. We've lost our, some close people to us, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Some that's the that's the thing for me is that you know I've got people around me that committed suicide and yeah. stuff like that and the beautiful thing about those people letting you know them and how they feel about you is that even when they're gone mm. their reminder of what they want from you yeah, yeah. stays yeah. and what they want what they want from me is that I live quality mm. life quality life. Mm. Straight right. Yes. Put it through, please. Wow. Hey. Body's changed up a little bit. From I went from the stage of being, you can see my face is getting skinnier, and I'm sure I look a lot younger than the death face that I used to have. So um, you can see by my legs as well that it's starting to change shape. 
So let me show you that my body. Not yet. The beautiful thing about these movement patterns that I've chosen to mimic almost like the chisel that Michelangelo would have used to knock away all the rock that is hiding the statue inside. 
the beautiful thing is, is that every time I choose to move, I know that I am moving away toxic, filled, fat, and revealing more of what I'll look like when I'm healthy. I'm not trying to carve a body, I'm trying to reveal it. I'm so fucking blessed to be facilitated to do this. Drug free, crime free. Blessed. You know, I've been thinking lately about the patterns that, that I'm on, you know, and, and 
what I've dedicated myself to as far as nu nutrition and and movement and all of these things and, and they all fit into one category which is like play you know what I mean with words with movement and I'm taking care of my nutrition and stuff like that you know because that facilitates the play health As a kid, I used to collect comics. And it's like now, because of um, becoming popular for movement and stuff, I'm getting to meet like-minded people. So it's like I'm surrounded with, like, X-Men. Or I'm like I'm amongst the Avengers, you know what I mean? And uh, it's just a test. It's just a testament to the fact that the more bad things, self-hate, mentally or organically that you take out of your life is the more beautiful and fluid and free it can become. Not to mention friendly. take a minute but um, it's like stone cold love and it's like pure love stone cold love told the old cold go and the old cold was hatred and violence stone cold love to old cold go suppose the low suppose that logo is imposed the logo violence if that's imposed in my personality then the hope will be remote so this host coped and I floated and I soaked dope modes. Dope modes is hip hop. Soaked the dope mode and I rode the flows slowly, sowed the poetry. I told my bones shoulder. So I took on these disciplines, you know what I mean? And I shouldered them, I held them on my back.
It's such a blessing to have people around you that have high expectations of you. It's like metal sharpens metal. And if it wasn't for the type of fighting people that I know, I'd be left to my own expectations, which are pretty low. So, you know, we all need somebody. And I need these people with these very high expectations of me to keep me alive. And I hope they feel the same about me because I'm not looking to go anywhere anytime soon. Great stuff. Other side. You can three each side, yeah? Beautiful. My whole thing is that at my age now, I'm looking at mortality a lot more. So being a generalist and feeling a lot more of life. Yeah. And, and, uh, and putting myself in different positions. And seeing what this, this can do before it stiffens up. Right. It not work anymore. And the environment is, 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 is um, controlling and restricted and for certain types of people. Right. that allows him to feed himself by mastering the use of eight limbs. And he moves those limbs in a particular manner that when you come into punching range, you can be relieved of your senses because this guy's gonna do his movement regardless. So either you get out of the way or end up another form of consciousness.
You know, the wonderful thing about spending time with his brother is there's a little secret that me and him have. Well, it's not a secret now, but me and him have in common is that we're both ex-alcoholics. And uh, I had the added problem of uh, being addicted to crack as well. So to be, both of us, to be in a space together who have chosen to dedicate our lives to movement which will force us to be healthy and eat properly. Which can change how you feel inside your own mind and make the hold of addiction a lot less stronger than it used to be. So it was, you know, it's always emotional for me when I see Kevin and animate my other movement brothers and sisters. Because without movement, there's death. Thank you. 
Ireland is a place that produced my mother and whatever ingredients they were, it produced a woman that, that um, could only react to me in frustration or rage. So that was the interaction I had with that woman. And going to Ireland is like going back to the minerals that produced her. Still alive and vibrant. Instead of what it, what it could have been um, if I didn't survive some of the beatings that I got. Yeah, so going back to Ireland was like going back and saying you didn't kill me. It's a bit sweaty. Yeah. Because it's gym stuff. Yeah. Um, it's one of the reasons why I move and why I'm obsessed with fight movement, which is to make myself feel more secure in a place where I was abused by human beings. And the whole movement situation was to reiterate to myself that um, I'm far beyond anybody's kind of constricted point of view of me. You know what I mean? Like, you can tell me I'm, I don't have this privilege or I don't have that privilege because I look like this or talk like that. But in my world, I have complete freedom within my anatomy.
What is this? Just eat it. <laughs> That's a sick one. <laughs> <laughs> Today I finally listened to the small traces of my trauma as a child. It's as if these symptoms that I learned to minimise are still asking for sympathy. So today I cry inside for the child whose teeth started the habit of grinding. Because of one terrible day. For the leg that still shakes and vibrates beneath tables until I notice and stop. For the twitching nose and eyebrow for the twisting of beard here and head here when I had it, until I eventually have to pluck it out. For the anxiety when someone stares at me. For the body that stiffens when I walk into a space where there are people I don't know. For the side to side motion of my jaw, open mouth because my jaw is stiffened. For the shaking of my head to crack my neck and release its tension for the tightening of fists, for this existence, for the rocking as a kid while I'm sitting, for the mouth that pops open while looking into space I caught myself doing, for the fear of just doing nothing, for the agitation at sudden loud noises, for the sizing up of every man I think notices me, for the inability to relax without drugs and booze, for the constant replaying of horrible days gone by, for the constant sadness of knowing I am going to die and leave my babies behind, most of the time, while being alive. For the tongue that sticks out when I'm doing something small and complex. For the pit bulls I have always owned to feel safe in my home. And for the good heart that palpitates and echoes the terror of the day as a child that changed the rhythm of my little heart forever. Today I cry for all my little symptoms that remind me I should cry for the little guy that did not deserve this.
Good? Yeah. Let's go. You know, at the end of the day, I'm just really surprised about how I got to a point of gripping onto certain things that came my way as far as knowledge and applying them to even the protoplasma of my very cells will release from those cells any stupidity that I've done or any stupidity that was done to me leaving behind something pretty naturally amazing Do me a favour, Ben. Can you get the towels from up downstairs? They're on the radiator in the, near, the, near the kitchen table. Okay, cool. There's some white towels, yeah. I think I'll do one more time and then I'm done, man. I'm not trying to make weight, I'm trying to make design. Because I was produced before, I'm going back to design. Be humble. Sit down. Be humble. And this is it for them from here. I start reintroducing food back into my body. Dynamic, powerful, more ancient type foods that we've been on the planet long enough to get used to digesting, you know what I mean? And then we start anew. We killed off everything else. 
Then we give the body a new story, microbially, atomically, cellularly. We give it a new story and we introduce a new world to the body and say, yo, this one's, there's no abuse left. And as far as the internal world is concerned, there's no such thing as a government. There's no such thing as bombs. There's no such thing as war. All there is now is a new caretaker, a new king, a new president, called self, considerate self, valuable self, loving self, us. Michelangelo's David got smoked, mate. I definitely think I'll carve a better, a better body than Michelangelo, that's for sure. And what's up with the little penis shit? That's weird. Awesome. <laughs> 